coming up on Shawele Road. Hello there, I am Dixon Wasake, a servant of the Lord Jesus. Now on 10th of June 2023, as my wife Brenda and I prayed and worshipped to a song called Jaira, I received a word from the Lord which is the inspiration for this message. Now, you might have heard of the word Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. You might even have heard of the story from where it came, when Abraham was tested by God to sacrifice his son Isaac. But the Lord of hosts wants me to show you the connection between Abraham's story and his journey of faith and the Lord Jesus agonizing in the garden of Gethsemane. Now there are actually now there are actually parallels between these two stories and I had never known until the Lord showed them to me. Are you interested? Come along to hear the rest of this message. Now, who am I to speak God's oracles? So, when I started hearing from the Lord, He said, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Thus the Lord of hosts gave me his oracles. I was to preach a series of 12 messages called, You are my anchor. And in this series, I am to show you the heart of God the King who loves his people very much. Now anyway, a warm welcome to you, especially if you're ministers of the Lord. We love our Christian brothers and sisters in this ministry. And meanwhile, if you watch this message until the end, we feature a ministry that feeds hungry children. Did you know that over 30 million children here in America, they do not receive a free meal when the school term ends? Anyway, in today's video, I will only share parts of the full message that the Lord has given me. So for those of you who are hungry for the Lord, the full notes to this message are on the link of this series. And now, let me help you understand about the Lord who provides for me. So, here is the anchor verse for today's message. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Now in that passage that I read, it is that sentence which says, the Lord will provide, which when translated in Hebrew is Jehovah Jireh. But to appreciate its origin, we are going to see the well-known story of Abraham going to sacrifice his son Isaac. But as you listen, think of the parallels from the perspective of the Lord Jesus wrestling in the Garden of Gethsemane, as we will also see when I read both stories so you can appreciate the parallels. So this is Abraham's journey of faith from Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1 to 14. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. 
Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Now that story, interesting as it is, as you likely know, it is actually a foreshadow of God sacrificing his own son, Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But that is not our primary focus for today. Let's now see Jesus' own journey of faith in the Garden of Gethsemane, as told in Matthew chapter 26, from verse 36 to 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. 
Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the parallels, but for your homework, you can actually see the full notes on our website. Now, the first parallel is this. Both knew the final outcome. Now, ultimately, it was a journey of faith for Abraham because Abraham knew Isaac would be resurrected, even if he killed him, because God had sworn with an oath and God cannot lie. He had given assurance to Abraham previous to this test that he set for him. The Bible shows this assurance Abraham had. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. So, like Abraham, who knew that God would establish an everlasting covenant through Isaac, Jesus also knew that he would be resurrected, even if he died. For God had also made it known to him through his ancestor David hundreds of years before. He had made it known that his dynasty would last forever. Now, it's because Jesus also knew that God cannot lie that he so confidently predicted his own death to his disciples. For the Bible says this, When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. Now, what you can see in this parallel that it is faith in God's character that gives you and I the confidence that God will do what he promised. So, in your own journey of making God your anchor, you have to know that God, who cannot lie, when he makes a promise, that promise will come to pass. And brother and sister, that is the firm hope on which you and I place our entire weight, our entire faith. Now, the second parallel is that even in faith, there is agony. Now, even if Jesus knew so confidently that he would die and be raised again, the scriptures still record his agony. And thus, they say, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, to the point of death. Likewise, comparing to Abraham, even if the scriptures do not record what Abraham was thinking, we expect that from Jesus' example, which is a parallel to Abraham, Abraham must have agonized internally, agonizing to understand God's will. Why would God kill his son of promise? He was likely praying that El Shaddai, if possible, let my son not be killed, but let your will be done. What we can therefore learn from this parallel is that even if we know we will eventually overcome, we still walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And brother and sister, it can be terrifying.
Now, there are many other parallels you might never have noticed if you've read both passages. For example, Abraham used a donkey part of the way Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Abraham initially had two servants with him, but they later stayed behind and he alone went farther up with Isaac. Jesus in the garden likewise had 12 disciples, but he left them behind and he went a little further on with the three before he left them and went even further on for the ultimate test of his own. So do your homework and visit the website to see many other parallels in this story. So let me quickly conclude this message. When Abraham finally understood with 100% certainty that Isaac, his son of promise, was to be sacrificed, he must have reasoned in his heart that God was also 100% capable of fulfilling his promise. Now, since God cannot lie, he knew that his son Isaac would be resurrected so that the promise of Abraham being a father of nations would be fulfilled. Because he was 100% sure that his son would be brought back to life by God, he was 100% convinced to cut the, to grab the knife and be ready to carry out the sacrifice with full faith. Now, likewise, after Jesus agonized in the garden, he came to 100% peace, knowing he would be raised because he knew the story of Abraham and he knew of Isaac. And thus, like Isaac, who never uttered a word while he was being laid on the altar, likewise, the Son of God never uttered a word, but like a lamb being led to the slaughterhouse, he never said anything. For he knew God himself would provide what was needed. Now for you and I, to be able to truly say, God is your provider, Jehovah Jireh, you have got to know God's character and you have got to know the promises he has made to you. So that when your testing comes, even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you will be 100% convinced that you will come out safe on the other side. It is why the Lord who provides for me wants you to know that the phrase Jehovah Jireh, it is not only about God providing for our needs today, food, shelter, security, and other needs. It is also about understanding the revelation the Lord wants me to give you that God, who is a king who loves his people so much, he provided the ultimate sacrifice, his son Jesus. And this Jesus has a message he wants me to give you. So the message from Jesus is that when we were without an anchor, when we were walking in death's shadow, without any hope, God demonstrated his love for us. He provided to us the ultimate sacrifice of his son, Jesus. Jesus came to this earth as a human being, just like you and I. He, however, lived a perfect and holy life, doing everything in accordance with God's will for him. He was killed by his enemies not long after he agonized in the Garden of Gethsemane, as we saw. Now, his enemies did not know that his death was, however, in line with God's 100% promise that this Jesus would be resurrected. And sure enough, three days after his death, he rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit and he went up to heaven where he is now seated at God's right hand, having successfully completed his task. Now, while we believers wait for him to come back as he promised, he has, however, given us his Holy Spirit as a 100% guarantee, as a deposit that he will come again to take us to himself. And this is the hope that I hold on to as a Christian. This hope is like an anchor. Now, do you believe this message? And if you believe this, 
and like me you want to make the lord your anchor then you can pray this simple prayer to become a christian god of heaven i confess that i am a sinner and have been one since birth but i have heard that you can make me new and you sent your son jesus to die for me he rose again and it is he who can give me his holy spirit please forgive me and welcome me into your kingdom teach me how to follow you in jesus name amen now i have some next steps for you especially if you're new believers number one publicly demonstrate your proof of getting saved that is what you just became you became saved demonstrate this by getting baptized now this is a means of publicly declaring your acceptance of jesus for the lord says that if anyone is ashamed of him he too will be ashamed of that person before god and the angels the second next step is start living a life of faith as a christian this starts with reading the bible and with praying and finding a christian community or a church that will help you now don't you worry god the holy spirit who started the work he will also get to finish it because the lord says i am with you until the end of all time now if you loved this message and you therefore love our work we have a great gift for you if you subscribe to our newsletter shawele road um, when you do you will get a free book called holding on to christ this is what the lord taught me in that first year you will also get a one year spiritual checklist guide these are regular messages that will encourage you to stay on track now if you are inquiring and you have some more questions about this message write to me if you want prayers write to me and i can pray for you there's just one thing that is left whether you're a new believer or a mature christian please stick around just a little while longer for our information notice board and the next steps otherwise lord jesus come marana and here is the information notice board pray for us without the lord our effort is in vain pray that we remain faithful humble servants subscribe to our youtube channel and keep up with our videos which support the website looking for a ministry to partner with pray volunteer give subscribe to consider supporting The above ministry website has not paid us to provide this recommendation, and so the views expressed here do not necessarily represent the views of the ministry promoted above. Likewise, the views therein do not necessarily reflect those of this ministry. So here are your next steps 